Hey, 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 it's the moment we've all been waiting for. Metroid Dread is just a few days away, and it's time for me to catch you up on the story so far. So first thing first, before I get started, because we're gonna jump right into it, I just wanna say a couple things. One, spoilers. I'm gonna be going through the story, so I'm talking about everything story related, so spoiler alert if you are playing through the games currently. Two, the Prime games are not gonna be included in this. They're not important to Dread's story. They happen between Metroid 1 and 2. This is gonna be talking about the 2D games. I will cover the Prime games in a different video though. And three, I will be talking a little bit briefly on some of the lore that is not covered in some of the games because there is a manga, other things, and so I will just briefly touch up on those so you guys have a better understanding of Samus' backstory. And with that, let's get started. Samus' family lived on K2L and were raided by space pirates shortly after the Chozo paid them a visit. Ridley ended up killing her parents and the Chozo took her in to raise her. The Chozo take her to their own planet and infuse her with their DNA to make her superhuman. While she's growing up, they train her to be a super warrior and give her a power suit. So this suit that you see on Samus, that's the power suit. She eventually leaves planet Zebes, which is where the Chozo are living, and she ends up joining the Federation police and they work for the Galactic Federation, which is the government of their galaxy. She works under the commandment of Adam Malkovich. We'll be hearing about him a little more later on. Eventually, she moves on from the Federation police and goes on to be a bounty hunter on her own. As a bounty hunter, Samus is frequently hired by the Galactic Federation to do jobs that they deem kind of impossible and, you know, need some miracle work. So this brings us to the first game in our timeline, Metroid 1 and Metroid Zero Mission. Now, Metroid Zero Mission has a little more story to it, so I would like to focus on that a little more. Metroid Zero Mission is the remake of the original, so we get the remake, it's the same game, however, they added a lot more story elements. Before we hop in though, I do wanna lay down some groundwork so that you guys have a better understanding of the events happening later on. So to cover a little more lore, the Chozo, to advance their technology, actually created an AI known as Mother Brain. We'll be hearing a lot about Mother Brain later on. Now the Chozo are known for their high advanced technology and intelligence. But the Chozo are also widespread to different planets, such as Zebes, Elysia, SR388, Talon, and ZDR. So you get the point. They're spread across different planets. But there's one planet that's causing a little bit of trouble. This planet is known as SR388. We'll be hearing a lot about this planet. SR388. On this planet resides a parasite, very deadly, known as the X parasite. And this parasite, what it does is it sucks out your life. It, 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 it sucks until there's nothing left. And what it's able to do is perfectly replicate your memories and your abilities and your genetic makeup. So it morphs into you while the original used dead. This parasite is soulless. There's no personality. All it cares about is multiplying and spreading. Obviously, this is devastating the environments and everything in SR388. So what the Chozo ended up doing is along with Mother Brain, they created the Metroids. Yes, with their advanced technology and the help of Mother Brain and everything, they create these Metroids. And what these Metroids do, and you might have seen this in Super Smash Brothers, but what the Metroids do is they latch on to uh, their prey and they basically suck the life force out of them. They just, same thing, suck all the energy out so there's nothing left. However, they don't transform. They, they just float around, latch onto you and suck. Ah! The Metroids are the ultimate counter to the X-Parasite and eventually start wiping them out. At some point, the pirates end up at S388 and they actually invade and raid the Chozo. Mother Brain, throughout the past couple years, has been quite frustrated because uh, Mother Brain thinks that she has outgrown the Chozo. She eventually betrays the Chozo and joins the Space Pirates and becomes their leader. So all you need to know now is that Mother Brain is the leader of the Space Pirates. So I think we're all on the same page now. You got a little bit of backstory. Now we can start Metroid 1. On that same planet, SR388, the Space Pirates actually attacked some Federation officers that were trying to study the Metroids. The Space Pirates stole those Metroids and are about to use them as bioweapons. This makes sense because Mother Brain worked on the Metroids, so she's probably ordering the Space Pirates to grab those Metroids because she probably has a plan. Those Space Pirates end up taking the Metroids onto planet Zebes, so that's a whole different planet. We have SR388, where the Metroids reside, 
and now they're moving them all the way to Zemis. Samus is ordered to head to this planet to take out the pirate base. Now the cool thing is, as I mentioned earlier, the Chozo are so far in technology and they're all about creating stuff and they reside in different planets. Zebus is one of them. S3R88 is one of them. Talon, which is the planet that takes place in Metroid Prime, is also inhabited by Chozo. So their technology is spread all over the place. This kind of answers our question as to why there's just Chozo technology for Samus to get upgrades for her suit. So throughout Zebus, throughout the pirate bases, Samus is going through um, and just wiping out bosses, upgrading her suit, and taking on big bad guys like Kraid and Ridley. Eventually, Samus makes her way down to the, to the core of the base where Mother Brain is residing, and in Mother Brain's room, you're able to take her down with 32 missiles, and success, Mother Brain is taken down. However, as Samus is leaving the planet, the remaining space pirates shoot down her ship. Also, now her power suit's not working. Samus finds herself at this ancient ruins that are created by the Chozo. There's like paintings and murals and everything. Eventually Samus finds herself in a room where there is a test. When she passes the test, she gets a brand new power suit. But what's the difference with this one? The first power suit that Samus was wearing was made from Mother Brain and Chozo. That probably explains why it stopped working. But this suit is far more into ancient technology by the Chozo. This suit is now a lot more compatible with other upgrades and abilities that the Chozo have to offer. Now we're able to get out of these ruins, get to the ship, and go home. Finally, we got through the first game. So now we're on Metroid 2, Return of Samus. This is the remake, by the way. So as we recall, the first game takes place on planet Zebus. However, the Metroids resided on SR388. The Metroids started devastating the food chain and the environments and it started becoming a problem. And now that the Metroids are being used as bioweapons, this is not a good thing. Federation officers reported that there was actually an abundance of Metroids left on planet SR388. They hire Samus to go and eradicate all the Metroids left. Samus goes to this planet and she starts wiping out Metroids, however we start seeing something weird. The Metroids are evolving. They're having different forms. They go from Larva Stage to Alpha, Gamma, Zeta, Omega, and then finally the Queen. Once defeating the Queen Metroid, Samus finds an egg that hatches into a baby Metroid. Now we've spent literally the entirety of the game upgrading the suit and taking out other Metroids. This baby Metroid, Samus just can't seem to kill it. You see the hatchling Metroid is seeing Samus as its mama. And it's not attacking Samus, it's not hostile, it's actually being very sweet to her and seeing her like a mother figure. Right before leaving the planet, Samus is attacked by Ridley. This time he has mechanical parts as he's trying to regenerate his full body. Ridley almost got the upper hand on Samus, but the baby swooped in in the nick of time by helping her take out Ridley. They once again escape the planet and leave Ridley behind. She hands over the baby Metroid to the Galactic Research Station. The last Metroid is in captivity. The galaxy is at peace. Famous words if you played Super Metroid. Samus gets a distress call about how the research station she left the baby Metroid at is under attack. She runs through the research lab, everyone's dead, and then we find the baby Metroid hidden in a room. Well, the baby Metroid is being stolen by Ridley. How do you get to that? How do you get over there before us? That's that's weird. Samus follows Ridley back to planet Zebus for the first game and sees the space pirates have been rebuilding. The game's layout should look pretty familiar as you see some areas look very similar to the first game. Same as the first game, Samus makes her way through the pirate's base, unlocking new power-ups for her suit and taking out returning bosses like Kraid, Ridley, and new bosses like Crocomire, Phantom, and Dragon. Towards the end of the game, Samus encounters the baby Metroid. But this time, it's not so baby anymore. The Metroid is huge. It sees Samus and it latches itself to her. It almost kills Samus until it recognizes that it's the mama. It recognizes Samus and leaves her alone. Well, Samus is okay for now, so she makes her way back to Mother Brain. And the same sequence, you shoot her with all the missiles, but there's something a little different this time. Mother Brain has a whole body. After an intense fight, Mother Brain gets the best out of Samus, and Samus is right about to die. Right before Samus is about to take her last breath, the baby Metroid once again swoops in and it latches itself to Mother Brain, saving Samus. However, Mother Brain's just that powerful this time, and she takes out the baby Metroid. The last Metroid is dead. All its power that it sucked out, and all its energy and, and DNA, 
falls upon Samus and gives Samus the hyper beam. Angered, Samus takes out the Mother Brain quickly and swiftly. Mother Brain is officially dead and Samus runs towards her ship. The planet is about to self-destruct and Samus must get out of there quick. Samus escapes in the nick of time, leaves planet Zevis, and planet Zevis explodes. From here on out, the majority of the space pirates as well as Mother Brain are destroyed. Now how did Mother Brain make a comeback? Mother Brain is a very intelligent AI. She probably made a backup save of herself and that's how they rebuilt her. This time though, we blew up the whole entire base. We blew up the whole planet with nothing left. So will we see Mother Brain make a return? Who knows, but as far as we know right now, all the backup saves and everything are destroyed. This leads to the next game. It's not a 2D game, but it does fall in line with the sequence. This game is called Metroid Other M. A lot of fans don't really like it, and the good news is this game doesn't actually offer much for the story, and so we can actually ignore most of it for now. However, one thing I do want to say is that in this game, it follows Adam Malkovich. We hear about this character a lot, and in this game, Samus joins him for a mission, and we get to see some of the backstory of the two characters. We get to see Samus and how she was in the Galactic Federation. We get to see how she was interacting with Adam, and we get to see the sacrifices Adam made, like how he had to sacrifice his brother for the greater good of a mission. And that's something that is mentioned a little bit later on when you dive deep into the story of like Metroid Fusion. All I have left to say about this game is that at the very end of the game we find out that the Galactic Federation were trying to create new Metroids so they can weaponize them. Uh oh, the Galactic Federation may not be all good, who would have thought? Adam understands the risk of this and he decides to sacrifice himself and destroy all of those artificial Metroids. The very, very end of the game, Samus completes the mission. Right before leaving the research station before it explodes, she grabs Adam's helmet and then having to fight Phantom, who's back for a second fight. Uh, after Super Metroid. Pretty nice touch. Samus escapes that, and that's pretty much the end of the story. I, I actually covered way more than I plan on doing in the script. <laughs> Oops. This leads us to the last final game, Metroid Fusion. Hopefully at this point the video is not too long. I apologize. So on this game, we're back in SR388, the planet where the Metroids were first created. Samus is assigned to escort a research team working for Biologic. You know, just a typical enemy attacks them and Samus swoops in to save the day. She kills it really easily and suddenly something strange happens. That wasn't an ordinary enemy. It was actually an ex-parasite. Well, now that the Metroids are all destroyed and they were the natural born enemy of the ex-parasite, that means the ex-parasite's back and it's multiplying. Samus doesn't have much experience with the ex-parasite, so it goes in and latches to her. On their way back to space, they're heading back to the research station, and Samus is starting to feel the effects of the parasite. It attacks her nervous system, and she loses control and crashes her ship. The ship sends Samus out in an emergency escape pod before crashing, and Biologics retrieves it. They send her to the Galactic Federation Forces headquarters where they operate to save her. You know that power suit we worked so hard to put together? Well, it's corrupted. Parts of the power suit are infected and have to be surgically removed. They provided an anti-X vaccine that will help Samus by allowing her to absorb the X parasite thanks to the Metroid DNA in the vaccine. So the last bit of Metroid research they had, they actually provided a vaccine that had Metroid DNA in it. Where did this DNA for the Metroid came from? It was actually from the hatchling that we saved a couple games ago. So Samus acknowledges that the baby saved her twice over. Samus is saved, but her appearance changes. Her suit is now more organic. The Galactic Federation AI computer states that they will soon arrive at the BSL research station. So Biologic, the research team, was on planet SR388 and they were gathering certain creatures. They are gathering like environmental plants and some of the wildlife to research on it. But why? Why would that happen? Wait till we find out. Before Samus arrives to this research station, they actually sent the corrupted parts of her power suit there. So now we have creatures from SR388 and Samus's power suit. Oh, what could possibly happen? Samus has issued a new ship from the Galactic Federation, but it's under the agreement that she has a new AI computer um, that she has to listen to. Samus says that she doesn't really like taking orders, especially from a computer AI, but she'll have to deal with it for now. Upon arriving, there is an explosion at the station. Oh great, now what can go wrong? The ex-parasite is running rampant and turning into different creatures, including zombie-like scientists. So they gathered a bunch of creatures from SR38, and what probably happened was some of those guys were actually infected by the ex-parasite. Now, it multiplies and it's running rampant. The computer orders the complete task on the ship, which Samus questions if she should trust the computer. 
However, the computer does remind her of her old commander, Adam Malkovich. So she decides to trust a little better. Later, we find that there is an imposter among us. An ex-parasite has taken on the form of Samus, and it's also using Samus' corrupted power suit parts. Okay, well fine, let's just blow up that fake Samus. Well, it's not that easy. Due to Samus now having a Metroid DNA in her, she is now weak to freezing, which is the Metroid's main weakness. The imposter Samus is known as SAX, and it carries an ice beam that can kill Samus easily. Samus now has to regain some of her powers by defeating bosses and absorbing power-ups that they drop. Almost every enemy, including space pirates, and bosses are all corrupted by this ex-parasite. Ridley is also in this game. We just can't get enough of Ridley. And but this time it's an ex-parasite of Ridley. And how did they how did the ex-parasite get a taste of Ridley? Well in Metroid Other M, there was actually a clone Ridley. It's a long story, but all you need to know is that there was a clone of Ridley in Other M. And that dead Ridley was sent into that research station, and that's how the experts like got into it. Samus begins to question the computer as it seems to send her into areas exactly when the events are about to happen. The computer then begins to act strangely. You see, Samus starts ending up in situations where once she fights through it, she finds certain power-ups that the computer didn't want her to find. After Samus claims she got certain upgrades, the computer starts to hesitate. Samus is retrieving the power-ups that the computer is purposely not telling her about. We finally find out what the problem is. Samus finds a secret research lab dedicated to Metroids. We find a tank filled with Metroids. Samus argues with the computer about how they need to destroy the lab. The Metroids don't attack Samus, probably because she has the DNA inside her, so they don't see her as a threat. The computer starts to reveal everything that has happened up until now. It talks about the whole story on how Biologic is creating an artificial environment similar to that of SR388 so that it can evolve Metroids. Huh? The only reason why Metroids were evolving on SR388 instead of Zebus is because SR388, its environment, helped it grow. Once it was exposed to the atmosphere and the environment and everything, it met the perfect requirements for those Metroids to evolve. Planet Zebus and other planets and research stations didn't have what it took to meet the requirements for Metroids to evolve. So Team Biologic was actually trying to recreate this. It is revealed that there was an Omega Metroid that was created in a matter of days. That's weird, because I didn't see it in the lab. Samus tries to destroy the lab, but the computer locks her into a room and says that the Galactic Federation is going to arrive before she ruins things. She argues with the computer and talks about how this is not right and how this can cause so many issues, and the Galactic Federation doesn't know what they're dealing with. She accidentally calls him Adam, which the computer is confused by, but then she begins to explain who Adam was and why he would make sacrifices, even if it was against orders. He knew right from wrong and he knew the sincerity of certain situations. He would make the sacrifices when sacrifices were needed. Just like another M, how he sacrificed his brother and eventually sacrificed himself. The computer becomes motivated by Samus, eventually agrees and helps her. It is then revealed that Adam uploaded his personality to this ship's computer before he died. The computer AI adds that before the self-destruction sequence begins, Samus should put it into orbit so that it also blows up the SR388 planet as well. Samus heads over to start the self-destruct sequence and is attacked by SAX. Uh oh, now it's time for the final fight. Good news is, now we have the ice beam, so we can take that Samus down. SAX quickly goes down, however, then transforms into an abomination, freak of nature. Ah. However, it's also not that much of a challenge and we're able to take it on as well. Once defeating it, the parasite comes out and runs away. Samus runs to her ship for evacuation, however, her ship is not there. And instead, there's an Omega Metroid that was mentioned earlier. She defeats the Omega Metroid and the ship arrives. Samus officially leaves the, the research station and it blows up onto SR-388, officially blowing up the planet as well. Samus understands this is a big deal and she will have to take responsibility for this. She knows the Galactic Federation is not gonna be happy about this. So what happens next? We'll have to find out when Metroid Dread releases. The game is only a few days away, and I'm really excited to see what's gonna happen. As we know that the ex-parasite is found, the Galactic Federation has their Emmys running around and they're chasing Samus down. We know that there's a Chozo fraction that's there. Now remember, the Chozo are spread to different planets. This one might have an evil Chozo. We'll see. Thank you guys for watching, and I appreciate you guys for trying to come in here, watch all of this to catch up on the Metroid series. And I really hope it was informative, I really hope it was entertaining, and I hope I caught you up in time for Metroid Dread. Enjoy guys, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.